everyone. So we have an extra bonus session tonight for the Shins Challenge individuals. So if you're catching this on either YouTube or in the Facebook group, or maybe even on my own Facebook um, profile, you know who I am. My name is Dr. Heather, and I've been your host of the Shins. Shin Splint Challenge. This is our first ever Shin Splint Challenge where we've really kind of gone ahead and understood, you know, from an educational Okay, so obviously some technical difficulties there on my end. So <laughs> welcome to live. <laughs> welcome to obviously our digital future. So I do apologize. My name is Dr. Heather and I have been your host of the Shin Splint Challenge. This has been the first ever Shin Splint Challenge where it was kind of really that concept that I came up with based upon the number one complaint we were seeing amongst all runners, beginners, novice, people who just were like tired of being stuck at home due to the pandemic and started really running. And what happened was they got shin splints. So I put this challenge together to really kind of give you guys a better sense of what shin splints were and what they are. So we went through a whole educational kind of class in session on day one. Day two, we went through that whole treatment protocol, step-by-step -step coaching process process really designed around um, a solid action plan you guys can put into place if your shin splints are problematic, if they do wind up happening. And really, it is designed on focusing on how to eliminate that shin discomfort for good. Now, day three, we kind of said, OK, how do we put this all together? What is meant by that? And I started talking about gait analysis. I started talking about insoles, proper orthotics, and I also start, started talking about sneakers. So with that being said, I want to introduce to you guys my special guest tonight. And this was our bonus session for those that are attending the Shin Splint Challenge. And that is running coach and expert, Jason. And I'm going to bring Jason on right now. We're going to add him to the screen. So please warm welcome for Jason. Hey, everyone. So awesome to have you here. And thank you so much. So really, I, I want to give people a better sense of who you are. Who is Coach Jason? You've got a lot of paraphernalia behind you. Oh, yeah. um, you know, we know you just in the running community. You're, an, mm -hmm. you're an avid runner. You have a wonderful educational background when it comes to being a coach and running expert. So can you please share with everyone kind of who you are um, and what you got going on? Oh, man, you're going to make me blush. You're going to make me blush. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> So, so my name is Jason Thompson. Um, I, like Dr. Heather said, I am a running coach as well as a chiropractor. Um, I went to Palmer College of Chiropractic uh, here in Florida, where I live, um, a few years ago. Um, I am a, I still practice right now. Uh, my dad is also a chiropractor, and so we work together, which has been a huge, a huge blessing and party, and it's it's been super enjoyable. Um, but I've been running for almost 19 years now. Um, 19 years in June will be my my run anniversary. Oh wow! And uh, super excited. I've run a whole bunch of races in my life, from 5Ks up. I've I think I've done nine, eight or nine marathons now. Um, just kind of all over the spectrum. I love running, and I love helping people and helping people reach their PRs too. So I should tell people too. So tonight, you know, when Jason, he's got a special presentation for all of you guys that are going to watch. And if you have specific questions, 
drop those into the comments. Let us know where you're watching from because uh, we do want to say hi, you know, and if you're finding some value in what Jason is sharing tonight, don't forget to give it a like, um, you know, kind of indicate to us, you know, you know what you're thinking. And don't forget as well, all the replays from any of the uh, Shin Splint Challenge nights that we've done, including this bonus section, will be in the private Facebook group. And then at the end, we're going to give you some ways to contact Jason. If you're looking at really kind of honing in on your own running performance, maybe you really do want to have a better understanding of what it means to have that gait analysis done, which is what Jason you know, is going to be able to share with you guys much more um, and kind of give you his expert opinion. So I'm going to let Jason really take it away now. And I know you've got some stuff going for us. So, you know, you go ahead and you're man in the ship right now. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, let me pull up my notes real fast. <clears throat> so I didn't know if, so I've used StreamYard in the past. So I didn't know if I'd actually be able to show slides. So, but I have my own notes. Um, so I'm just going to keep my beautiful face up and I'll just kind of go through my notes and sure. uh, maybe another time I'll put together an actual like, infographics and pictures and everything. Okay. Um, um, but yeah, so for whoever's watching, uh, when Dr. Heather asked me to uh, to be her guest speaker, I was super excited. Um, when she asked me to, to talk and kind of share my thoughts, she wanted me to tie in everything together. And I thought, okay, well, how can I tie in, you know, running form and technique and, you know, et cetera. How can I tie all that in when, you know, you guys are all runners yourselves. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty daunting task to try and wrap all that together. Um, and yeah, I mean, you guys have covered so much in this challenge. Dr. Heather has done an amazing job talking about everything. So I thought of a, a few different things, you know, what do I want to share? I kept drawing some blanks and uh, I decided, okay, I need to just, I need to keep it simple. I need to keep things simple. So I thought, well, what are the most important things that I can share with people with runners when it comes to form and technique and injury preventions. Well, then I got thinking and I thought, you know, uh, let's make it even more simple. What would runners like you want to hear so they can run healthy? So that's when I decided to piece this together and I decided the best way to help your running story is to share kind of my running story because I'm a firm believer that my story can become your story. And within my running story are several gems uh, that can help you become an even better runner and run healthy. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is share a few different gems and kind of wrap in everything that Dr. Heather has shared. And we're going to put a nice big bow on it and you guys will be ready to run that next PR. Okay. All right. Um, so a little bit more about me. So like I said, I've been running for almost 19 years. Um, I grew up here in Florida. Um, when I was in middle school, I had a PE coach uh, that would have us run a mile every Monday. And we called that Mile Monday. And we were supposed to record our times as the year went on. And, and that was a lot of fun. Um, at first I thought, you know, dang, this is a whole mile? Like that's far, I can't run a mile. And But being kind of the competitive guy that I am, I realized, you know, I was beating most of the other kids in my class and probably impressing a few girls in the class too. And so I was, I was pretty motivated to keep getting better. Um, so that really got me going. I wanted to keep getting faster. Uh, you know, each week I'd try a little bit harder and push a little bit more. Um, so by the time I was in seventh or eighth grade, um, I was around about a 636 mile or 636 for the mile. Um, and around that same time, I ran my very first 5K. Now up to this point, I had only ever run in you know one or two mile races, nothing more. I had, wasn't training for anything. I thought, oh, a 5K, you know, I can do a 5K. Well, my very first 5K was March, 2003 and it kicked my butt. <laughs> I learned the very hard way that you need to train and you need to be prepared to go to races. Um, so uh, fast forward a little bit later that year, my PE coach had us all on the blacktop out in that hot Florida sun. And he asked if any of us were going to the high school in the area, Lake Region High School, uh, if, we were, if anyone was interested in cross country. Now I was a pretty shy kid. Um, I've always been kind of an introvert and kind of shy and um, kind of reserved. And so I, I didn't really raise my hand too quickly, but I just talked to one of my friends who shot his hand up and said, well, Jason Thompson in the back, he'll run cross country. I kind of looked around, everyone looked at me, you know, in the movies when everyone just kind of turns and looks at you, that's kind of what it felt like. Um, so after class, my coach gave me this huge packet of papers with all kinds of information. 
a calendar that had different distances to run and a bunch of other stuff with it and uh, talked about when summer practices would begin. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So later, once school ended, uh, after eighth grade, uh, had that summer off before freshman year. And I'll never, ever, ever forget my very first cross country practice that summer. So my dad drove me to where we were supposed to meet and I could see all these big kids around. Now, when I was a freshman, I was pretty small. I mean, I'm six one now, so I'm not huge, but I was much smaller my freshman year. And so I saw all these big kids and you know, I'd only ever heard and imagined what high school would be like. And I was pretty sure I was the smallest one out there. So we, we parked, my dad got out with me and we walked up and uh, the, my coach, Coach Kaufman saw me. He could tell I was the new kid. I don't know if it was the deer in the headlights or, or what, um, but he walked up and introduced himself. And after a few minutes, he says, okay, you know, we're all stretched. It's time to go start running. And everyone knew how far they needed to run, except for myself and one of the other freshmen there. And he said, okay, well, I'll run with, with you guys. We're going to run two miles today. And I remember thinking, two miles? What? This, this is the first day of practice. How are we going to run two miles? And, but I wasn't going to say no to coach, so we ran those two miles. And we got better. And as the summer went on, we gradually increased our mileage. And I became more and more comfortable the faster we got. Uh, so later on during that summer, I started developing some really bad heel pains in both of my heels. Uh, you know, every single run, it would feel like my heels were on fire, like just pins and needles. And you know, it wasn't a very pleasant experience. It got to the point where I had to just kind of walk and you know shake it out. And I felt really embarrassed because you know I'm, I'm supposed to be running so well, but you know my feet hurt. And if you, you've have if you've had pain like that, be sure to leave a comment below because. I, I think a lot of people think, oh, well, I'm the only one experiencing that. I'm sure all of us have experienced something like that before. Um, now, if you were to record what I looked like when I was running at this time, I probably looked like a T-Rex with my arms up really high. I uh, probably had my heels way out in front of me and probably just looked pretty goofy out there. I was also running in pretty, uh, pretty uh, we'll say pretty janky uh, Nike, Im Nike shoes. They were the Nike impacts. So for those of you that don't know, way back when Nike made the Nike shocks and the impacts was kind of the, the knockoff or the step down from that. Um, and I had these shoes for months, probably since the previous school year started. Um, so my very first tip, my very first gem that I want to share with you guys to make sure you're running healthy is to make sure you have decent shoes. And Dr. Heather talked a little bit about this. Um, but I just wanted to, to highlight that for a second. Um, so just like you go to a doctor, uh, I strongly recommend that you should go to the doctor regularly, especially a chiropractor. I may just be biased on that, uh, but go to a doctor regularly and get a checkup. Uh, with your shoes, it's the same way. You know, regularly check up on your shoes. How's the tread on the bottom? Uh, are there any tears in the upper of the shoe? You know, what does the wear pattern look like? So for example, here is one of my pairs of shoes. So I run mainly in Adidas. Uh, I have really narrow feet and Adidas seems to sit pretty well with me. Um, but I've had these shoes for quite a while. Actually, I've had these shoes for almost eight or 900 miles. Now I know you may be thinking, what on earth are you running in shoes for that many miles? Well, Adidas has a little special midsole that's a little different than most and they, they tend to last a little bit longer. But if I were to do a checkup of my shoe, you notice I'm starting to wear down right on the, the, the medial part of my forefoot right up front. So I've always been a bit of a pronator, not extensively, but a bit. And over time, that's kind of been my wear pattern where I've, I've just kind of rubbed off that part right there. Um, so let's talk about how to pick a good running shoe. I know Dr. Heather talked a little bit about this too. Um, so I used to work at a running specialty store uh, out in the beautiful Wasatch Mountains in Utah. Um, it was actually the same store where Ultra Running was created. So if you're familiar with Ultra, Ultra kind of um, piloted the whole zero drop um, shoe maybe probably seven, eight years ago, back when things were starting to go more minimal, Ultra came to be. Um, but Ultra has a, a more of a foot shaped shoe. So it's not pointed and tapered off at the end. It's kind of the shape of the foot. Uh, reason being is to allow your foot to spread when you run. Um, it also has a zero drop, meaning the heel and the forefoot are exactly the same. Um, so it's like you were standing barefoot just with tons of cushion underneath you. Well, just hit my mic. Um, so when I worked at that running store, uh, we we sold a ton of shoes. Out West, running is a big deal, quite a big deal out there. 
And I worked at this store for a couple of years. I ended up becoming one of the, the number one salesmen there, which is kind of cool. And one of the things that I encouraged people to do when they were uh, just trying to decide a shoe is this. So when people would walk in and say, okay, you know, I need, I need this shoe. My friend runs in, you know, blah, 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 but I don't know what I want. Perfect. Those were my favorite. So what we would do is we'd go outside and we do a very simple and basic gait analysis. Um, we'd use an iPad and you could use your own camera. You could download an app that uh, has uh, like a gait analysis feature, but it was very, very, you know, very, very simple. And anyone could do this. You guys could do this too. Um, so what we would do is a few different views. So what I would start with is I'd have the person put on some shoes, some good neutral shoes that they're familiar with. So something that they've run in before or something comparable to that. And we'd go out and find a straight line and they would just jog back and forth a few times. And I would be behind them, you know, holding up, holding up the iPad just like this. And we record them. I watch what their feet do, watch how they land, watch how they uh, go into the loading phase and push off. I'd watch how their arm swing was, what their head was doing, if there was any, any hip torsion, any hip rotation. Um, and we'd kind of watch that view. After we do that, we'd go from the side view. So I watch them run in front of me. That way we can get a good grasp on what's going on, whether they're you know, prominently striking on their heel or whether they're on their toes or on their midfoot. We get a really good uh, grasp of what's going on. So you guys can do that too. So you either set your camera up yourself on like a curb or if you have a little tripod or whatever, or if you have someone that could do it for you, go outside and try this. Um, I don't think people, this is just my opinion, but I don't think people watch how they run enough. Um, so I know when I have people record me when I'm running at like a race, I always get very self-conscious just because I feel like I, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy. I, I'm afraid that I'm, you know, I look goofy out there. Um, but I challenge you guys to do that. Go out and record yourself because you'd be surprised what little things that you notice, whether, you know, maybe one foot is landing just a little bit on the outside of the foot and you pronate through a little bit more, or maybe the other foot's landing on the outside and you keep that supination, or maybe... Um, you're, t you're landing on your heel and, um, you know, you're really hitting that loading phase really hard. Kind of watch how, how you run. So a lot of times when we have injuries, there may be simple tweaks that we can make to our gait that can help fix that. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. So, um, so that's, that's gem number one. So now I ran all four years in high school and I had plans of running in college. Uh, but wasn't quite fast enough to walk on at the school I wanted to go to. So I went to Brigham Young University in Utah. Um, if you're not familiar with collegiate running, uh, BYU is a division one school and they've been top 10 in the country for like 15 years in a row or something. Uh, they just won nationals a couple years ago. They had an individual this year that won. Um, they're a great program and, and wasn't quite fast enough to get onto their team. So I went to school my freshman year. Um, and I went on after my freshman year, I went on a two year church mission uh, where I was actually in Arizona for a couple of years. And when you're on your church mission, you don't really focus on, you know, on running. I, I probably ran maybe a handful of times. And that was it. Um, so it was pretty much two years off from running. When I came back, I went back to school and that's when I started training again. And I, I started coaching myself. I started, uh, I feel like the running world blossomed in those two years. You know, GPS watches became more mainstream. Um, you could access training plans online. Um, just everything was more user and runner friendly. And that's kind of when I fell in love with the longer races too. So around 2013, 2014, uh, I started running more mileage, uh, but I had zero idea what I was doing. Like, like not a thing. Um, I knew I needed to run more because obviously if I'm racing longer, I should probably train a little bit longer, right? Um, so I knew I needed to run more. I started doing some half marathon, marathon speed work, or, or so I thought. Um, but again, I didn't really know how to train for that distance. And to no surprise, around this time, I just started developing some really sharp pain around my right knee. Now, some days it would be there. Some days it wouldn't. Um, I tried different running shoes. I tried zero drop. I tried max cushion. I tried everywhere in between. Um, you know, I tried all these different things. Now at the same time, I was also working at that running store that I was talking about. And I had access to just about any resource I needed. Um, I tried wearing a brace. I tried wearing compression, you name it. I probably tried it. 
Um, it eventually got to this point where the pain was so much that I was ready to give up running. I said, I, I don't want to do this anymore. After months and months, I said, this is, this is dumb. Like why, why am I going out here and, and doing that? And if you guys have had pain like that before, let me know in the comments, because again, I don't, I think people think they're just on this tiny Island. We are a big running family. We all experience very similar things. Um, so I was having this pain and like I said, I was ready to give up. Um, I started looking at cycling. I was like, well, I can't run, you know, I love cycling. So why don't I just start cycling more? And I started looking at road bikes, but I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't want to do that because, you know, there's not enough races. Um, and I was just pretty much tired of hurting. So before I gave up, I went to a couple of different doctors. I went to uh, one of the doctors in the student medical facility. And that was, I mean, he did some orthopedic tests and he was just like, oh, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, okay, gee, thanks. Um, then I went to another, I went to a chiropractor. Uh, you know, I, I'd been around chiropractic my whole life. Uh, like I said, my dad's a chiropractor. I'm still practicing. And at this point, I didn't know I wanted to be a chiropractor. Um, but I, I knew that chiropractic works. I knew that it could help me. I would heard a lot of good things about this particular chiropractor. And in fact, he was known as the running chiropractor, which is kind of where I've gotten uh, like my Instagram handle where I'm Jason, the Cairo runner. Go figure, right? Um, so I made an appointment. And for some reason, I again, I, I don't know if it was just the introvert in me, but I was pretty embarrassed uh, walking in there. I felt like I had, I was a dog with a tail between my legs. I don't know why I was so embarrassed to be there. I mean, I was an exercise science major, so I, maybe I felt like I needed, I, I should know better. Um, you know, I worked at a running store. I mean, I teach people how to run. I, you know, why I've been running for 10 years. Why can't I figure this out? And I, I just, I don't know. Um, so I didn't really know what was wrong with me, but I did a lot of, of playing Dr. Google, which was a mistake because Dr. Google is not a great doctor because it, it makes you think that every, anything under the sun could be wrong with you. Um, but my hunch was I developed some, some ITBS or uh, iliotibial band syndrome. Um, but I also had a thought maybe it was Oshkid slaughters because um, I had some pain on the front of my knee, right, under, right below my kneecap. Uh, so during this vis visit, uh, he watched me run. We did some orthopedic tests. We did some exercises and he chalked it up to be IT band syndrome. Well, I'm like, well, duh, of course. Like, well, I went through this whole thing and I mean, okay, I guess that's good. Um, so he gave me some exercises. Uh, he told me, to, you know, do this and that. And he said, you know, go home and do it. And so I did. So I went home, started doing the exercises and the pain was still there. It's like, what the heck? Like, why can't I get over this? Uh, so it wasn't until, uh, you know, sometime later, I talked to my boss at work. Um, so my, the family who owned the, the running store I worked at was a huge running family. You know, Hawk, the owner, yes, his, he goes by Hawk. Uh, he was, the, he's been a St. George marathon winner. Um, his wife, Cheryl has qualified for the Olympic trials a few times. Um, he has a bunch of kids that have all been phenomenal runners. Um, their son golden is the one who developed ultra. So, you know, a huge running pedigree. And he told me run with a metronome. I'm like, what a, a metronome? What, what do you mean a metronome? So listen to this. So, uh, I mean, I was pretty desperate. So I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to, to get better. He said, run with a metronome, set it to about 170 to 175. I'm like, all right, fine. So I download this app on my phone and I run with my, I ran with my phone at the time and it would just beep, just beep, 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 170 to 175 beats per minute. And the first run was okay, but I could still feel a little bit, but it was nothing like the pain was before. So the next day, did it again. And guess what? There was no pain. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Th this is too easy. What, what's the catch with that? So I did it again. The next day, no pain. So it turns out what was happening was my turnover and stride rate was so slow. It was practically like I was bounding, like, whoo, whoo, whoo. maybe not that extreme, but it was pretty slow. And what was happening was as I was running, or when you tend, when you bound, you tend to have really hard heel strikes, which when you hit your heel really hard, you're pretty much slowing all that momentum down, hitting the load phase really hard. And I was pushing off with 
a weak, weak push off because my ground reaction time, the amount of time my foot was on the ground was so long. So my second running tip or my second gem for you guys to running healthy is to try out a metronome to help improve your form and improve your stride rate. A lot of times when we run, um, our stride rate is the first thing that can be fixed. Now, I'm not saying go and overhaul your entire form, um, but but try this. So here's how it works. You set the app to beat between about 170 to 180 beats per minute. Um, the closer you are to 180, the better off you'll be. Um, that's usually where a lot of the pros are running at. Most of the time, they're hitting you know 180 or more. Um, now, if you're running with a really slow turnover like I was, this will feel really rushed. You'll feel like you're you know you're shuffling. You'll feel like you you know you can't keep up. But just just try it. So here's what you can do: practice at home. So inside your living room or your bedroom or wherever, jog in place. So have the app going, so it's beeping, and just jog in place. Just jog. Don't move anywhere. Just jog. Get familiar with that cadence. Get familiar with that. Uh, get the beep. And each time it beeps, you should be stepping on the ground. Now, um, as you get the feel, you begin to start to move around a little bit more, but keep that cadence the same level. Um, so when I worked at a running store, we taught a learn to run class. And this was one of the first things we did every single time was get a feel for that turnover. But what happens when you start to just jog in place is it's really hard to jog in place to land on your heels. You tend to land on midfoot and forefoot. So this will also help you get more of a midfoot strike to a forefoot strike, which is a little bit easier on the body than, than pounding those heels into the ground. Um, so uh, so every time it beeps, you should be stepping. And as you get the feel, start moving around a little bit more. Now, this single-handedly saved my running career because I was ready to give it up. I didn't want it anymore. I didn't want to run anymore. But this simple tweak to my form has allowed me to keep running and has allowed me to keep getting better and since then, I've run a number of marathons. I've run a bunch of half marathons. And I've also moved back to Florida where I was able to keep running through chiropractic school. Um, and now out of chiropractic school, I'm able to keep running in the real world. Um, I have a wife and two kids, uh, two little kids. My daughter turns five tomorrow. So happy birthday to Paisley. And my son, Adam, turns three in June. Um, so through this time, I've also been able to earn some sponsorship opportunities. Um, I'm racing on a few different racing teams. Uh, one of my biggest dreams was just to be able to have that feel of cross country again, where I, you know, I'm part of a team and I've had that since I've been able to keep running and keep staying healthy as I, as I go. Now, uh, this is a lot of fun because I love the team aspect of running, but it's also added a little bit of pressure to my running. Now I have this obligation beyond myself where I have to perform well. I have to perform well for the team. So a couple of years ago, I was training for a marathon and I had a decent buildup, but got really sick about, about six weeks or so before the race. Um, and it just sort of lingered there. Um, I worked really hard for this race and I didn't really feel good about just giving it up because I'd put so much time and energy and months of training into this. Um, but I knew going into this race, I was not going to be 100% getting on that starting line. I remember that morning of the race, I also was very apprehensive about you know being there. It, I was it was pretty much a game time decision. I, I didn't really know if I wanted to do it. And it, it side note, if you ever have <laughs> hesitations about running a marathon and you're on the starting line thinking twice about it, you're probably not good, supposed to run the marathon that day. The reason being is if you defeat yourself mentally before the gun even goes off, 26.2 miles is a long time to run it's a lot of miles to run and not be all in it. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so I had some knee pain show up. Um, uh, not the same knee I had before. It was the other knee, but I also had a bit of a hip flexor strain, um, just kind of gradually developed. And, um, you know, I, like I said, I probably shouldn't have run the race, but I wanted that boss. I wanted that BQ again. I wanted to get that Boston qualifying time. I was also supposed to run this race with one of my training buddies. So I felt even more pressure because I'm like, okay, well, I can't just leave him hanging. You know, we got to do this together. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, well, long story short, um, I ended up not earning a BQ that day. And I ended up earning my first and only DNF, the do not finish. Um, I ended up dropping out around mile 11 uh, because the pain was too much. And mentally, I, I just couldn't do it anymore. I said, nope, 
Uh, I'm limping with every step I take. I can't even keep my pace up like this. This is not good. And so for about a mile and a half, I thought, okay, you know what? I don't know if I want to do this. You know, this, this is still a long way to go. So at mile 11, I peeled off the course. I ripped my bib off and I just kind of sat on the curb for a minute. And, you know, an officer came by and said, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Just bad day. And, you know, that was it. So that was, that was rock bottom. Like that was, for me, that was com the complete bottom of the barrel. I was in the deepest crevice of that canyon. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever felt like that before. I mean, if you have, you know, hop in the comments and let me know. Um, but that was, that was rough. It was really bad. Um, I remember, you know, I was, cause I was so far away from the starting line. I had to figure out how to get back to some place where, you know, my wife could come pick me up. Thankfully I had my phone with me. So she was a little confused when, you know, she answers the phone and she hears me saying I'm not running anymore. Um, but I had to kind of find my way, um, you know, ended up adding another couple of miles and my wife picked me up in a parking lot around the corner. Now, uh, this isn't running tip or running gem number three, but perhaps the most important, a more important lesson in this is listen to your body. Now, even though I didn't run the race I had wanted, I am incredibly grateful that I did run this race or part of this race, I guess, because that race was a major pivoting point in my running career. Now, I told myself I never, ever, ever wanted to feel that pain again. You know, not physically, not emotionally, not mentally, never, ever again. I, that, I still can recall that pain and that, just that heartbreak. Because, you know, I've never not finished a race. And that was, you know, everyone was so excited for me to run that race. And they were expecting me to finish, and I didn't. And I told myself I will never, ever let that happen again. And I will never, ever, ever let it get to that point ever again. So I was going to do all the things that I can do to make sure I needed to take care of my body and make sure that I was always on my A game um, or always striving for my A game. So running tip number three or running gem number three to running healthy is to make your health in your body a priority. Let me say that again. Make your health and your body a priority. Now, training plans may look really great on paper, but unless you can execute them with precision, you know, you're just building a house with no foundation. You know, I love going through training plans and looking at what people are doing. And I get really excited at times. because I'm like, oh, this is a sweet workout. This is awesome. You know, that's so many miles. That's great. But if you're not building that foundation, you're not taking care of the base. You know, that, like I said, that training plan is just walls and it's going to crumble the more you build. So do the little things. So do, so here's some things that you can do. Do some kind any kind, just some kind of core work a few days a week. Focus on your abdomen, focus on your hips, focus on your glutes. Um, your glutes are those great extensor muscles. They're not all for show. You know, they're, they're, they help you run. They help you extend in that, um, you know, in that, that gait cycle. Um, your core is what keeps you strong when you're fatigued at the end of a race or at the end of a run. Your core is what will keep you upright. You know, it'll, it's that, those posture muscles, work those. Even if you're doing something simple, like only doing a plank for 30 seconds, just do it. Do some kind, any kind of core work because that is going to help you. Excuse me. Do some kind of form drills. So I do this several times a week, but I'll do things like high knees or butt kicks or skipping and bounding, things like that to just go through the running motions, but also work those muscles that don't usually get worked the same way when I'm running. Um, Another thing, go all in with your health, meaning drink more water. Everyone can drink more water, eat better foods. I'm not, I'm not a huge health nut. I don't profess to be, you know, the healthiest person out there. I mean, I, at the end of every day, I eat a whole bunch of cookies because cookies are my vice and they make me happy and I will never, ever give that up. Um, but I do, I, I do better in other areas. Um, so eat better foods, um, cut out just one thing you don't necessarily need. You know, a lot of times we eat because we, it's comfort or we just want to, or we're bored. Um, focus on those things. Look at those, look at areas where you can strive just to be 1% better. And mentally go all in with your training, be laser focused. You have to commit to what you're doing, you know, whether it's, you know, running a marathon, training for 5k, losing weight to be a healthy runner. You have to commit to being a healthy runner. So will you guys commit to that? Will you guys commit to be a healthy runner? You know, go all in with that. 
Uh, you know, the background on my phone, there's this symbol graphic that says, whatever it takes. If you're a Marvel fan, you may get that quote. That's from Endgame, Avengers Endgame. Um, but do whatever it takes to, to accomplish the goals you want to do. Do whatever it takes to be better. Do whatever it takes um, to, to be healthy. So when you do these things, you will run faster and healthier and you'll be smoother. I promise you will. You know, make your health a priority. Um, you know, this whole week has been about shin splints. Make it a priority to do those things that Dr. Heather talked about and improve your form. Improve the areas that you can uh, that you can, so you don't have shin splints. Um, make it, make the effort to do it. I promise you guys can be healthier. You you will run faster when you do these. You know, since that DNF, I've gone on to PR in just about every distance that I've run, uh, every distance I've raced. All my high school PRs are now just high school PRs. I'm faster right now than I was in high school, which has always been a goal of mine. Um, in fact, the big goal that I wanted to break was my 5K PR. Um, I've been sitting right at that, right around 16.05 for the 5K. And just last week, I broke 16 minutes for the first time. I ran a 15.43 5K, which was awesome. That's what I was, I've been training for. And the only way I got there was doing the things I just said. You know, be laser focused, commit, uh, take care of your body, um, Make sure you know your your shoes are okay. You know, work on form. Do all of those things because those are the things that helped me get there, and I know they can help you get there too. So that's all I got. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. I I tend to ramble a little bit, so I tried to like keep it keep it toned down. But you guys are awesome. Run healthy, run smart, and be fast. Jason, that was awesome. That was an awesome story. I was trying to catch some of your um, tidbits and drop them into the comment section so people could kind of just know where to kind of go, even if they're going to skip ahead or, you know, to different parts um, of this actual segment. And guys, you know, if you're looking to really get more information from Coach Jason, I'm dropping right now. This is his private group, uh, Running Secrets. You know, this is where you can really tap into his knowledge base, you know, from his whole life experience. And there's a lot of truth to everything he said. You know, he he didn't just go out there and start running and breaking PRs. You know, it's a trial and tribulation type of thing. We've all been there. You know, he's sharing his personal story. So we all know that, you know, there's a beginning and then there's an end. And it's a matter of figuring out where you want to go. And exactly like we've been addressing throughout this, you know, these three days here, it's really kind of understanding, use professional help, seek out those that are going to fit your kind of goals, what you're looking at doing, you know, and, and even if it wasn't to use me as the doc or Jason as the coach, take what we're saying, take that knowledge, help it um, utilize that insight for your, your sense and really where you want to go to next. So, you know, guys, um, this has been a fabulous three days. I'm already thinking about how we're going to kind of make this challenge a little bit better because I am going to launch this challenge again come the end of June. I do want to see Jason come back because I think he provides a lot of value. And if you guys have found value with Jason on and really as a bonus section, again, drop some comments down below. Remember, if you're going to catch the replay of this segment, do hashtag replay. Let us know what kind of questions you have. Interact in the Facebook private group for the Shin Splint Challenge. I'll make sure I get um, I send out Jason's contact information in there as well so you guys know how to reach out to him. But just remember, you have access to the private group until May 1st, and then it will close for a bit until we kind of do this the challenge again. And I think I'm going to actually invite another guest in as well to really kind of maybe hone in on the nutritional component of running because when we do get those shin splints and those flare-ups, a lot of us want to know about natural ways to decrease inflammation, and that's where food, hydration, supplementation really can play a role. So it's a matter of just knowing kind of those different resources for you. Now, like I said, if you have any questions for Jason, please drop them into the comment section. Otherwise, guys, we are going to go ahead and sign off and wish everybody a wonderful night. Jason, thank you so much again. This is thank a phenomenal story that you have. 
I, okay. I was actually, I was off camera, but I was smiling, I was laughing, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God, that is hysterical. And I also remember certain things too, because you know, you and I are not too far away in age mm -hmm. as well. Um, so again, thank you so much for sharing all that. Of and course. next time, yes, you know, put all of those slides together. Let's get yes. some photos of you. You I'll know, put some pictures and videos and all that yeah. good stuff. Um, so again, guys, like I said. If you catch the replay, it will be in the Facebook group. That's where you'll be able to see it. And uh, just thank you everyone for attending this three-day Shin Splint Challenge. I'm Dr. Heather, and this is Coach Jason, running expert. And I will talk to you guys later. All right, everyone. Have a wonderful night. Okay, guys? See ya.